Hello, I'm Sue Graham, Professor of Public Health at uh, UWE. I'm co-director of the Apple HIT, along with a colleague from the University of Bath, Dr. Starfee, who's just had a baby, so she's not here with us. And we're about um, active people promoting healthy life expectancy. And the emphasis really is on physical activity in older people. Um, and obviously we work closely with the um, Shine HIT, which has a similar, some, some similarities in, in common. Um, so I think we're uh, quite, we're, we're engaged with Bath, which is um, a direction that Mr. Health Partners is now going in, I think. We've also got involvement from South Gloucestershire Council um, and from Bath City Council. And um, we've made quite a few links with voluntary and the third sector. So Linkage, which is a charity in Bristol, um, RSVP, which is also another uh, charity, retired senior volunteers partnership. Um, and also Bristol Aging Better, which Adrian has already referred to, the big lottery fund project. Um, I think why, why physical activity? I think it's one of those areas where there's enormous potential for population um, benefit, both in terms of mental health and in terms of physical health. Um, it, there's an increasing amount of evidence about sedentary behaviour, not being terribly good for your health. Um, as we are now, <laughs> all sitting here. In fact, there was at a meeting recently where we were suddenly all required to do uh, armchair Pilates for five minutes death at your desk. So I won't force you to do it, but it was quite an interesting experience. Um, and there's quite a lot of evidence that actually people with uh, morbidity, if they're doing lots of steps, it does affect their progression uh, in terms of morbidity. So I think there's quite a lot of tie-in with what um, the presentation this morning from Simon said. Um, so the sorts of things we've managed to do to date, we've uh, got a steering group with a um, wide range of individuals attached. I'm going to say a little bit more about each of these. We've done some work um, looking at levels of physical activity in Bristol using the Bristol Quality of Life Survey. We've done some service mapping. Um, we've, we're doing a systematic review with Shine, with Clark, looking at um, changes in the built environment and impact on health. Um, we've got the project that we were involved in at the inception of the HIT has been recognised by Public Health England as promising practice um, and we've got a grant application um, underway, a big grant application. Um, so some of the quality of life data shows, um, obviously one of the limits to this is self-reported data. So more men than women reporting exercise, different patterns in different parts of the city, um, less activity in black and ethnic minority groups. Um, and some interesting associations with exercise and quality, self-reported quality of green spaces. Um, the ACE program um, was a pilot project where we used peer volunteers to activate um, people who were not very physically active, and they did it by partnering them and finding activities that they wanted to do which might be anything from a bowls class, bingo, knitting class, something in their locality and going with them for up to six months to get them kind of uh, in the habit of going. So it's very much premised on the fact that if physical activity is a part of what we do every day and it's linked to social activities, it's not something you do just for its own sake. So that um, was led by um, Aphrodite. It's had really positive effects on physical health, um, objectively measured strength, self-reported mental health. And I'm really thrilled to say that it was one of only two out of 952 initiatives in a review commissioned by Public Health England that was considered to have a really good evidence base for it. So we're really proud of that. Um, and that model, we, we work with Linkage to deliver it and it's being rolled out and extended across, um, across Bristol. Um, so research, we've got the project with the Clark, um, we've got a big um, grant application into NHR and we've got another project with some colleagues at UWE. And I think it hasn't perhaps come out particularly today, but I think the HITs are a really good vehicle for researchers to be engaging with people who may be implementing their research. And a lot of research funders now want evidence of impact, evidence of dissemination. And one of the um, powerful effects I think in the HITs is that um, providing that function and that framework rather than having to set it up on a project by project basis. Um, we've done um, some work trying to map 
um, physical activity services across um, the patch. Um, and it, I think one of the challenges around this area is um, when we first started, I thought there might be quite a lot of emphasis on rehabilitation services. Um, but in fact, our focus has probably moved more to the local authority public health population programmes. But obviously there's a potential disconnect there because you've got public health commissioning one set of physical activity um, type of interventions. Then you've got interventions in secondary care being commissioned perhaps by the CCG. Anyway, it's quite a complicated area, I think. Um, I think one of the challenges was that lots of people had services but didn't really know how many people were using them, when they were using them, and whether they had made any difference at all. Um, there were quite some quite big gaps between um, the people leading on physical activity in local authorities who might not have seen 20 mile an hour zones as a physical activity intervention, although it probably is one of the more effective uh, interventions around, and not much linked with planning. So I think that work has um, stimulated some reflection um, in our group about uh, what are those interventions. Also quite hard to know what proportion if you think that most of us could do it being more active, what proportion of people are involved in any sort of services or um, initiative to try and get a bit more active? So there's a real need for mobile shifts around that. Um, the other thing I'm just pleased to say, we've just heard we were a partner in a bid by South Gloucester um, to do a programme around people with, uh, at risk of developing diabetes and they've just got funding from Health Education Southwest to run that programme. So I think that's another example of where the HITS can partner with initiatives that are going on um, otherwise. Um, so we're, we're extending the rollout of the ACE project. Um, we've had some discussions with Bristol Aging Better. Um, we're going to do a bit more work with the Quality of Life survey, looking at perhaps more at the mental health and social isolation issues. Um, and we're, we're thinking in a bit early days, but can we use some more innovative methods of looking, using mobile technology to look at physical activity patterns. And um, maybe perhaps celebrating activity in older people a bit more. And um, generally, I think perhaps increasing um, expectations. So I'm not suggesting that we should all try and do this, but you know, why not? Maybe we shouldn't think this is so abnormal. We're all kind of thinking of the left hand, maybe the right hand, definitely not. But you know, maybe we could be a bit more ambitious. Um, and this is just a program in Rutland, which I think is quite nice. They are trying to celebrate older athletes and older people with very physical activity. And maybe we could be doing a bit more um, in the city to do that. Um, so I guess we're, we're working to try and kind of articulate a vision about how to support active and healthy uh, lifestyle. Um, I think there is the potential to have an influence on readmission rates, on fall rates, and on mortality rates. Uh, and I think our vision is where people are active, fully engaged in society, uh, physically and mentally um, happy, connected communities. So clearly lots of linkage with shine, lots of linkage with dementia, and lots of linkage with what um, is going to be talked about next by Sarah. Okay, thank you.